Welcome to Lit Poetry, the podcast where we go on a journey of discovery, reading, analyzing, and discussing great poetry from around the world. Poetry is worth it because the reading and writing of poetry is a revolutionary act that has the potential to transform both the reader and our world. Oh, hello there, old boy. My name is Mr. Denison. Your mother and father have invited me to your beautiful estate to impress upon you the fundamentals of becoming a man, a real man. No crying now. Vulnerability is not allowed during my lessons. Take this tissue and stop your sniveling. I'll begin by reading you a poem by Rudyard Kipling. If you can keep your head while all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting or being lied about and dealing lies or being hated, don't give way to hating. And yet don't look too good, nor talk too wise. If you can dream, and not make dreams your master. If you can think and not make thought your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same, if you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools or watch the things you gave your life to broken and stoop and build them up again with worn out tools, if You can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or talk with kings nor lose the common touch, if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you, but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, then yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And which is more, you'll be a man, my son. So let's start this podcast with a few words regarding the historical context. And this is not necessarily a poem that I really love, but let's have a go at it. Roger Kipling, a prominent British writer at the turn of the 20th century, achieved significant popularity. His 1910 work, If, featured in Rewards and Fairies. And this work showcased Kipling's adeptness in both prose and verse. Prior to this, Kipling had already established himself with poetry collections and well-received children's books like The Jungle Book. If, with its advocacy for self-restraint and composure in challenging situations, exemplifies how British literature has championed the principles of Stoicism, an ancient Greek philosophy emphasising indifference to hardship. Stoicism posits that individuals should navigate life without letting extreme emotions, whether positive or negative, dictate their actions. A sentiment echoed in Shakespeare's Hamlet, perhaps. This philosophy associated with the British national character is often termed the stiff upper lip, symbolising British integrity, endurance and composure. 
the Victorian era out of which Kipling came witnessed the popularity of such Stoic ideals, exemplified in William Ernest Henley's 1888 poem Invictus, concluding with the lines, I am the master of my fate, I am the captain of my soul. Kipling's If aligns with this worldview, emphasising the notion that respectable individuals, especially men in turn-of-the-century Britain, should embody integrity and diligence to control their destinies. Welcome back. So I want to actually give a bit of a critique of this poem because, like I said before, I'm not really a great fan of it, especially in terms of what it has to say about manhood and masculinity. According to the speaker in If, manhood is not an inherent trait, but rather something one must earn. The poem reflects somewhat traditional views on masculinity that feels particularly dated and anachronistic with the speaker describing traits like self-sufficiency and level-headedness, which would be virtuous in any person but are specifically specified as male, showcasing an outdated and perhaps sexist perspective. However, the poem doesn't automatically grant these qualities to every man. Instead, it suggests that manhood must be earned. The speaker emphasises that masculinity is an ambitious goal requiring effort and those who attain it will forge a solid sense of self. According to this perspective, being a capital M man is considered a virtue and an accomplishment and a reward in itself, but I can't help but find this is a rather tired and worn out idea. The central idea is that composure leads to strength and integrity, with the speaker asserting that practicing restraint and discipline will make the world the sun's oyster. These qualities, according to the speaker, will transform the boy into a true man, defining respectable men by their ability to lead measured and dignified lives. Importantly, this poem reflects a restrictive and narrow view of gender, aligning with the ideas of manhood and masculinity. All these concepts about composure and restraint align with the stereotypically British notion of the stiff upper lip advocating resilience in the face of adversity. This worldview, popular in the late 1800s and early 1900s, corresponds with the ancient Greek philosophy of Stoicism, urging indifference to both pain and pleasure. The speaker's arguments in If can be seen as advocating for British society, particularly British men, to embrace these Stoic ideals, as it promotes a similar sense of moderation and indifference. The entire poem revolves around a set of standards or goalposts, delineating good behaviour that a boy must achieve to become a man. The poem suggests that manhood is not inherent or natural. Instead, it is a state achieved through self-sufficiency, self-mastery and stability. To become a man, the addressed son must learn to keep his head, lose and start again at his beginnings, and talk with crowds and keep his virtue. In essence, he must cultivate inner security to be brave, centred and unflappable. The extensive list of instructions implies that achieving this is a challenging endeavour. Although, for me personally, it comes across as a little bit preachy and perhaps a little bit didactic. The speaker suggests that the rewards of such challenging self-mastery are significant. Being a man surpasses having the earth and everything that's in it at one's disposal. In other words, manhood itself is a reward, offering its possessors an unshakable sense of self. But one could see how this view could easily contribute to overblown misogynistic tendencies. The capitalization of the word man by the speaker implies that he views manhood as an honorable title, akin to earning a degree or being knighted. To a modern reader like myself, it all sounds restrictive and sexist as it appears to single out specific human qualities as distinctly male. However, within the speaker's worldview, where gender roles at the time were clearly defined and male authority was unquestioned, this vision of a distinct and virtuous masculinity aligns seamlessly, I suppose you could say. 
By portraying masculinity as an achievement, the speaker emphasises that, in his view, the powers and responsibilities associated with maleness are earned. They're not automatic. However, qualities that truly give a man a more fuller and deeper grasp of his humanity, such as humility, gentleness, sensitiveness and humour, are not really attended to at all in this poem and are really desperately lacking. In truth, I wanted to discuss this poem on the podcast simply because it is so bloody popular, even to this day. Rather than affirm it, however, I would like to call into question some of its basic arguments. Plus, who really wants to celebrate a preachy poem that's trying to tell you answers, when the best poems, I think, are more focused on raising questions in you, the reader? So that's it for this week's poem. Until next week, I'll see you later. We'll finish by listening one more time to the poem. If you can keep your head while all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting or being lied about, don't deal in lies, or being hated, don't give way to hating. And yet don't look too good, nor talk too wise. If you can dream, and not make dreams your master. If you can think and not make thought your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two impostors just the same, if you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools or watch the things you gave your life to broken and stoop and build them up again with worn out tools, if You can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or talk with kings nor lose the common touch, if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you, but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, then yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And which is more, you'll be a man, my son. You've been listening to the Lit Poetry Podcast, presented by James Laidler. For more podcasts, poetry videos, and other useful resources, visit our website at www.litpoetry.com. Thanks for listening.